Titanic's breakup is one of the biggest reasons we come back to this story. Countless theories have raged over decades to figure out what happened that night, how the ship split in two, how she reached the bottom. However, one key element has not been spoken about, has not been hypothesized, has not been discussed, and yet it seems so key to find out how this ship broke in two. We heard a terrible explosion, and I, as all of you know, the Titanic had four funnels. And when we heard this explosion, the Titanic broke in half. She said there was an explosion. How has this not been brought up in any way? No one is disgusted, no one has even tried to explain what it is. It's something that seemed so important that she said right at the beginning before she broke up, she said that this is what broke the ship in two. When Titanic struck an iceberg on April 40, 1912 at 11.40pm, she struck the iceberg at a killing blow, opening seams through six compartments. Titanic opened the fore peak to three cargo holds and boiler room six and boiler room five. It is thought and theorized that Titanic broke up just before the final plunge. She reached a high angle and her sheer weight broke her in half. However, Ruth Barrell talked about that she saw all four funnels out of water as she broke. If she reached a high angle, merely the first and second funnel must have been under the water by now. And so, how did she see all four funnels? This is because Titanic did not break up at a high angle, she broke up at a low angle. However, if she did not reach a high angle, how did she break in two? What forces caused the ship to snap in half? That is the question and the word. She did not snap in half, she exploded into two. As the water starts rushing in through the compartments, she eventually reached boiler room two. From observation of the wreck, boiler room two is visible on the bow section of the wreck. And you can see the boilers aligned. And if you look at the boilers, they seem to be imploded. Even though it's been sinking for two hours and 20 minutes at this point, the boilers will still have hot steam in them, maybe even fires still brewing. However, the hot steam will still probably be in there. A lot of survivors say that they still saw some steam coming out of the funnels. Very little amount of steam, but steam nonetheless. And this is when I think the boilers imploded. An implosion happens when cool ice water causes hot steam inside a condensed area. Since the water is much more dense than the steam, there's much less pressure inside the boilers and all of a sudden the outside air pressure is enough to cause an implosion. When the iceberg was spotted, it was immediate that the ship needed a stop. A red light came on in the boiler rooms as said by Frederick Barrett. He said a red light came on which means stop. And in doing so, the entire area and condition of the boiler rooms have to change. And Frederick Bar Barrett said that you have to close all the dampers, that was his initial reaction. And he said that he left the dampers closed when he left. As Frederick Barrett is one of the only known survivors to see the iceberg damage for himself, I would imagine that all the boiler rooms had the same initial reaction to close all the dampers. This reduces the amount of steam going to the engines and allows the ship to stop and turn at a mass better rate. After quick inspections, the captain orders the ship to go at a steady rate, continuing the voyage just in case the ship can make it. After inspections, I would imagine the boiler rooms that weren't abandoned from the damage would have continued how they were and opened the dampers back up and continued shoveling coal in. 
I would imagine after when the ship was eventually given the order to abandon ship that they would have abandoned the boiler rooms and either left it open or closed it either way it is not known but observations of the wreck it looks like they could have just left it open as the cold water starts to rush in the boilers filled with steam has continued after the collision I can only believe that this is when the implosion occurred as the water increases pressure on the boilers the boilers implode and all the steam and everything rushes out creating an immense heat that burnt the steel beside the bulkheads breaking the ship in two at, at the bottom of the seam below the waterline as a new hole has been made on the side under the waterline of the Titanic water starts to rush into the boiler room too and as the water starts to flood from the front of the ship the middle starts to sink as well as the double bottom is keeping the bottom half and as the ship starts to break apart it starts to bend inwards the top starts to bend towards each other and the bottom starts to break at, away from each other as the center of the ship goes down the bow briefly rises back up and the stern rises up as well eventually mangling the top decks as observed from the wreck pushing against each other and eventually separating when the bow eventually loses all its buoyancy and is now just dead weight it is always going to the bottom no exceptions however the stern is still buoyant and can continue as it is and go through natural flooding as the double bottom is only keeping the bow and stern together the bow is pulling the stern down and as the double bottom cannot take it any longer it eventually stretches no more and separates allowing the stern to fall back and create this massive splash that we all love